but let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. This is definitely the right moment for me to do this kind of message because I'm just coming out of a situation where my time was being wasted by people who were either incompetent or just didn't care about my time. And if you look around right now, 2020, 21st century, there's a lot of that going on where people are not looking out for each other. And on the other side of it, people are becoming very impatient with each other and not having a grace and a mercy on each other. That's definitely common right now. And part of the problem is that we've got, as I've said recently, we've got all this information, we've got all this technology, we've got all these distractions right in our face all the time, easily accessible, and it can create something where you want things right now. Or as they say, I I want it and I want it yesterday. We're at that point right now. You can get food, you can get entertainment, you can get you go down the list, name anything you like, and you can get it quickly if you really want to, almost no matter where you are now. That is seen as a good thing, but it's really a dangerous thing when there's a delay in getting that. You need a lot of patience right now. And I'm not a big fan or adherent to science, as they call it now, science falsely so-called, and these studies these ever-changing studies and results that they've got coming on. But I do see some truth in some of them. And one of them I've heard about in the last few years is our brains or the way we see the world is actually changing now because things are so easily accessible. That's where the impatience or the patience comes in. You know, we've got quick tempers now. Everybody has got a sharp wit and these clever quips and comebacks now. Everybody's trying to put each other down and get the last word now. Everybody feels entitled. I know not everybody is like this, but a majority, a grand majority of people are like this now, where you're just entitled. You want to be first. You got this impatience. It just dominates right now, right now as I'm speaking. And yes, there are entities, beings from the kingdom of darkness, from the devil that are messing with us uh, regarding these things. But sometimes it's just you and me. It's just our bad attitudes and our reaction and lack of contentment. It's a lack of thankfulness that's causing the impatience. And I'm talking to Christians, obviously, here because we're talking about the Bible. Anybody else can get in on this. But this is for the Christians. We're supposed to glory in tribulations. Romans 5 right there. We glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. This is a mouthful right there. You can break that apart in a lot of ways, but you've got to understand that God has things under control. And when you're leaning on him, even when it seems like all these situations around us are really trying us in little ways and in big ways. It's, it's going to work something good in you if you endure it and if you're taking it with patience. One of the jobs I've had is driving, delivering things, driving trucks. I delivered something to a business and the person that was unloading me was very unsure of himself, very slow. And I get the feeling that a lot of people who had also delivered before me had been very impatient with this this person, this worker, this employee. And when he was done, he thanked me for being patient. And the truth was, I was biting my tongue and I felt impatient inside, but I was doing my best to be merciful on this person because I didn't know his situation. I didn't know if something was going on with him. I didn't know if he was just not coordinated physically. I had no idea. So I didn't say anything. I didn't push him or insult him. And he thanked me. He said, I thank you for being patient. And I kind of laughed to myself. This has happened to me more than once. And I'm I'm always thinking, man, who has he been around? You know, a lot of people have said it said to me in my life that I'm you know modest or humble or patient. But really I'm not. The truth is I'm as selfish as just about anybody. 
I'm as self-absorbed as anybody. I want my way. I want people to do things as fast or slow or whatever, as, in whatever way I want, just like you or anybody else. Maybe just in comparison to the person that's saying that, I, I'm those things. I'm always paying for more patience. As soon as I get the thought that I'm patient, that patience gets tested. As soon as I pray for more patience, which I've done a lot in my life, more tests fall on me. And I know those are no accidents. God heard that. Those are good prayers for God. And I don't know about you, but I've had an experience where I prayed. And as I'm praying, I can feel the Lord responding like, yes, yes, I like that one. Yes, you're going to get that prayer. And sometimes when I feel that reaction, I know he heard me and I know I'm going to get what I prayed for, such as I want more patience, Lord. Yes, yes, you're going to get that. I'm going to answer that. Sometimes I, it's kind of like I'm ringing my collar like, oh, man, what did I just pray for? Oh, man, what's he going to do? But I shouldn't worry like that. He's going to do something good. I mean, it's the Lord. He's going to do something good. And I should let him do it. But sometimes it's not pleasant to go through that, that trying or the tribulation or the perfecting. In Luke 8, we're looking at just after Jesus has explained the meaning of the parable, which I think we've mentioned in this ministry a few times in our messages about the four kinds of people. And the first three kinds, the hard ground, stony ground, and the thorny ground, they're going to be unfruitful. They're not going to receive the word. This is what the parable is about. They can't receive the truth or they receive the truth and then the cares of the world choke them. And then a fourth kind of person, it's a good ground. It's going to receive the seed. It's going to receive the word. It's going to receive the truth. It's going to receive Jesus Christ. And there's going to be a good reaction or a good harvest. It's going to be good fruit. And just after that parable, Jesus is saying, saying that on a good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. The good ground kind of person, that fourth kind of person in a Luke 8 parable, then it's going to be a, a result of you having patience. And it's going to be a result of you keeping the word, not just having heard the word, but you kept it. You meditated on it. And of course, I don't mean a meditation like some Eastern mystic. The Eastern mystic kind of meditation is a perversion of a real kind of meditation. That the Eastern mystic kind of meditation or the Buddha or the yoga kind of stuff is about emptying your mind. We're talking about taking the word of God, the Bible, what Jesus says, and focusing your mind on that, keeping your mind on that. And if you can't understand the difference in that, then just give it a try. Or just ignore me and just think that they're both the same thing and that all religions are the same or whatever your bag is. You need patience to build or to bring forth fruit. And in Romans 15, the Lord is called the God of patience and consolation. That a God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. Yeah, God is really patient towards us. There's no doubt about that. He's given us so many chances to quote-unquote get right. He keeps letting us come back. He keeps allowing us to repent. Now, I understand once you receive and are received by the, the Lord Jesus, once you're saved, you don't need to repent in that way to get salvation. You, you're saved once and for always, but there is a working there. There is a perfecting there. And he is patient in allowing you to come back and say, I need forgiveness, not to get salvation back, but to stay right in your eyes, Lord. The God of patience and consolation. This is one of those phrases I, I think I probably never really focus on until right now as I'm reading it. That you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, give us patience.